Hello everyone, this is Christian Maldex Town Interactive, and in this video we are going to create a new uh, view page so that we can show the details of an account. So of course start off by setting it up so that we can route to that uh, component or view. So if you click on an account, we'll now go to the account details page. Accounts for the moment just have a name uh, field on them, so we'll display the name. We use the, our uh, action details buttons to give us uh, default behavior so if we hit cancel we'll go back to where we came from for now when we hit save we're just going to print a message to the console same deal if you wanted to create an account so that's uh, what we'll focus on in this video As usual, I'd like to say thank you for watching the video and for subscribing. And of course, if you find this uh, video helpful or entertaining in any way, I hope that you'll consider subscribing. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started here. So first thing we're going to do is create our new view. So in our views folder, I'm just going to choose new and we'll have it uh, called accounts details dot view. And to start off with, we'll just make a basic view, nothing spectacular, counts, de counts, details. So now we have a new view. It's going to be our job now to allow us to route to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is inside of our components and routing here, we'll spend a little time in this thing, we have our types. So we have to add to our enum here. So we have accounts details added to it. So we're good there. Next up is the routing service itself. At the top we've specified our route entries. We're going to steal this one right here. We're going to call it accounts details. The actual view is also accounts details. And now we'll do some hyphenating things. Count details for our lazy loading, we'll give it the same name, same path. The parent is accounts, and the actual route enum is the account details. So then all we have to do is take that down to our routing service and add it. And now we'll be able to route to that. And to start with that, let's go into our accounts view. So we have our accounts here, and it's where we're at on the screen there. So now we can say, if you click on one of them, all we have to do is this, routing service, navigate to, choose the one that we're going to, routes dot account details. Of course, we're going to need to determine which account we're talking about, and we do that by doing our query, giving it an ID. In this case, the ID is the account, or the ID of the account that's being passed in to us. Let's go ahead and put our uh, semicolon there and our comma there. Take this, go down to when we click the Create button. Of course, in that case, we do not have a ID to pass in. What we'll do is pass in zero. So with that saved, if we click on name or one of the accounts, we navigate to the account, click on a create, same deal. So at least now we can navigate to it. Now, just like uh, several things or what we did in the account or the securities, we want to have the ability to say, so if the user is on an account detail page and we hit refresh, nothing, there's no back button, there's nothing to go back to. And what we want to do is, of course, have it so it automatically says back is back to the accounts. And we do that by pushing a route. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is do some more cleanup is in the, um, what did I do? Store and route types. 
So to get in with all the other conventions that we've started to create, we're going to put the payload first. So now we have the payload pop route and payload push route. This is of course broken things in a couple of places. So we've done the route types. We'll go into our route module. At the top here we have it where we're pushing. So payload in front, not in the back. And we'll take this and copy it over there. I think there's two, there is. So that takes care of route modules taken care of. And we have the router outlet as a problem. Which one were we just doing? Push. So we're good for push. And push is good. And this one needs to be payload pop. So payload pop is now taken care of. So the router outlet is good. We're going to go to our security. Which one? Details. So up in here. So this is push. So payload push. Should be up there now. It's all harmonious. Harmonious. Change that there. And this is what I was talking about. So on the security details, of course. Previously, what we did was uh, somewhere, right? Yeah, I guess we did it in mounted here. Checked if the history is of length zero or that the previous route is not securities. And if it's not, then we push that onto the uh, uh, history. So we're going to do that again for our current account details. Speaking of which, let's go into the routing service itself and make that whole process a little bit easier. Like I said, we checked to make sure that the history was uh, uh, length was greater than zero or if it's zero, then we pushed a route. We also checked the uh, previous one. Let's just make that easier to do. And I called it is previous route. So let's put it here. Public is previous route. Routes, routes. And in here, like I said we said if this dot history dot length, if that's equal to zero, then it can't be the previous route. Otherwise, this dot history, whatever the top one is, dot ID, if that's equal to the route you passed in to me, then it is the last route. So routing service is good. With all that done, we can actually return back to our accounts details page. We'll start with our script here a bit. And in here we need inject. We're going to need the routing service itself. Import a couple of things. Slash component slash details action buttons. Perfect, and we also need to import from components slash routing. We need the enum and the service. Import just a couple of things from the store. We're going to need action push route, we just talked about. We need the action decorator, action function. Getter accounts, the getter decorator, getter account type, and payload push routes. So we're good there. And as I mentioned, we're going to figure out which account we're talking about by parsing the query string. So we're getting that ID passed in. So if we do a little type safe way, we'll just create something we'll call iQuery. For now, it just has an ID, which is a string on it. We're going to use our details buttons. We need to specify that. So in components, detail action buttons. So now we can use them in our template. But before we turn to that, we're going to a little bit more in our script. 
So we want to have the ability to push the route. So we'll specify private read only push route. And that's an action action function of type payload push route. We need to be able to get the account that we're talking about. So getter account. Probably just imported something I didn't want. Read only getter account, and it's of type getter account. We import getter accounts. We did. So we have the getter there. Now we need the inject part of this. So inject private read only routing service. Running service, perfect. We're going to have an ID, make it reactive. So we'll start off with zero. And right now, our accounts only have a name on them. So we'll just have the name as well. So when our component is created, we'll do the whole. So if this dot running service dot is previous route routes dot accounts. So if that's not true, then we'll just go ahead and push in the route routing service, create the route for us, routes accounts. So that will, if we save that, should see our back button appear. So now our back button is there. Perfect. And we of course need to get the ID from the query string. So routing service dot query param. The type is query. We want a number to come out of this thing. So we'll get that from the ID and parse int. We'll turn that string into an int for us. So now that if oops if this dot ID less or equal to zero, then we're done. Otherwise, this dot load, which we need to add. So inside of load, private load, we need to get the account, which we have the ability to do. This dot get our account, this dot ID. From there, we can say that the name is account dot it right dot name. Well, we're at it. The last thing that we're going to add to the script, though, is a save. So private save. Right now, we don't have anything to do with it. So a console log save. So the script side of things is all taken care of. What we need to do is add a little bit to our template here. Let's put a form on here. In there, div dot inputs. Print each one. Count details, and we'll put a label, which is a name. And input so type is equal to text, and the model is equal to that name data that we have there. And we also have our detail action buttons. And of course, like I said, we have to say vbind save. This is just the save function that we have there. Let's go ahead and save that. So now we have our name popping up there. While we're at it, let's just change a little bit of a tiny bit of styling here. I don't want to type these in. We'll have the style. So in here, all I'm going to do is say for the inputs that at include padding, top and bottom, nothing, and just a little bit right and left. So we'll push that uh, inputs. Oops, just added it. So we'll push the input and all of that, except I kind of want the buttons to be full screens wasn't supposed to be included inside of inputs. So there we go. So we hit cancel. We'll go back to the account page. We hit save. We'll go back to the account page and get save written in the console. 
same deal for creating. So everything is working correctly now. So now we have an account details page. From here, we're actually going to start adding things to our account to actually display some information and do some calculations, make this thing useful, and figure out whether we're making money or not. But that'll have to wait for next uh, video. Until then, I will talk to you later. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button, as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you, and I will talk to you in the next video.